KCLR. Okay, so welcome along to another episode of KCLR's GAA Hurling Legends leading up to the All Ireland final this week. I'm joined by none other than Mr. Owen Larkin. Owen, how are you? Good to see you. Not too bad. How's life treating you at the minute? Ah, uh, good now. Looking forward to Sunday, so um, I'd love to be involved with Sunday, which are up. Time waits for all man's, you just have to get over it. And tell me, how's life since you retired? Ah, sure, it's been busy, I suppose. Um, going back to the club and trying to give a couple of years to the club has been. It's been great, but uh, try to go on a few family holidays and repay all the make up for last time. Make up for last time, repay all the last time, and uh, we're just back from Fort Ventura first family holiday since in the summer. Yeah, in the summer, so it was it was brilliant. Loved it. Um, Pe- people at home won't even understand that. Home. That's the kind of commitment you gave, like, and, and horror, horrors in general gave. Like, you, you give up all of that, you know, to be able to play an amateur sport throughout the summer. Well, that's that's the bottom line, you know. That, that was the first actual real summer holiday we were on, you know, as a family. I've been on a couple of holidays with the with the kids, you know, over to Disneyland and things in April. But as regards the middle of the summer, that's hurling time, and it was hurling time for twelve years in my life. And, like my oldest dad is fourteen now, and that was the first family holiday we were on. So, and um, that's the commitment you have to give if you want to reach the top. And look, we were lucky enough to go to a lot of places on holidays after all years, but there's lots of lads out there that don't get that opportunity. And you know, we were just lucky that I was far from Kilkenny and part of a great team. Well, listen to me, you can't complain. I think you have eight all Ireland medals. I've got ten Leinsters. Yeah, eight all Ireland, ten Leinsters played in twelve all Ireland frames and two replays. So over twelve. Over a 12-year kind of career, you know, it's not, it's not bad, it's be right up there. Tell us, this is where it all started for you? This is where and it all me. started. And, and me. you, yeah. 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 Well, yeah. Um, this, is, this is actually new, this used to be the squash court, so yeah. as times moved on then, the, the senior team went to the gym and we transferred all this, but it's in the, it's in the clubhouse where it all began. Growing up in the village, obviously, Owen, family dynasty, the name Larkin anyway, let's be honest, around here it was like, because you know, you have your Cannons up in Galway, you have your O'Connors or Halpines, you have your O'Shea's in Kerry, but Larkin's around here, it was kind of one of those names, wasn't it, synonymous with Hurling? Yeah, it is, and it's synonymous with James Stevens, and yeah. I suppose that was probably a small bit of pressure growing up, that there was, you know, Larkin's after winning all Ireland, and Mickey Kenny and all Ireland with the club as well, and thankfully I've gone on to do both as well, so um, it's worked out. I'm not sure whether the Larkin name probably helped me along or, or hindered me, but look, at that. I just had to get on with it and uh, create my own bit of history, I suppose. I was more interested in Larkin's chip shop. Yeah, I was interested in Larkin's chip shop for a while, myself. And, uh, I remember after 2006 on there, and myself and Jackie's here yeah. in the city west after. We couldn't wait to get home to get <laughs> Larkin's chips because we weren't after having it all summer. You were, you were a star for the Larkins. Yeah. Good plug for Larkins, actually, there. <laughs> so, come here, tell us. How's life been with you for the last few weeks and leading up to the All-Ireland? Do you be thinking about, I'd love to be out there with the lads, or are you totally like, you know, resolved to, I'm never going to be there? How, yeah. how, how is it? Yeah, it's, it's actually tough. I was actually driving home after the semi-final and I just thought to myself, lucky bastards, so yeah. they're getting ready for the best three weeks of their life, they're getting ready for an All-Ireland. It's the best time of the year, you know, when you're in Slogan in January and February, you, you can't see this coming. But once the summer comes around then and you get get to the championship time and then you eventually get to an all Ireland final the three weeks before or right? absolutely unbelievable. What the lads be doing now leading up to the, the week leading up to it? Because you, you're, you're the most recent retiree if you want to say that, you know, yeah. who we're, 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 we're going to interview this week anyway. Yeah, so. well I'd, I'd imagine like what we used to do was we'd probably train on Monday, Wednesday and have a small bit of a puck around on, the, on a Friday and the meeting then the team is named but like it, it won't be too hectic on the training field, it'll be more so Keeping hydrated, keeping in out of the sun, not that we're having much of it out there, but no. just keeping in out and get plenty of rest and getting your nutrition right out for the week. But it'll be mainly mental things this week and, you know, the brain and glass to keep sharp with a few drills and things like that. This is probably one of the first years on where I think most places are up for grabs, aren't they? Yeah, and like, like there's not some, you yeah. know, somebody apart from maybe one or two positions that we yeah. know. Probably all Murphy and TJ Reid are yeah. probably, you know, two nailed them. Over the last two weeks, I suppose, you know, everybody on the panel would have been gunning for a place. And if you can't get a place on the team, you get a place on the 24 and talk out with all Ireland final. But like, like you said, it's, there's lots of places up for grabs and it'll be interesting to see how the team brain goes on Friday night. What are we expecting on Sunday? Do you think it's going to be a rip-roaring final? Will they start off with that intensity or how do you see it panning out today? Yeah, no, look, I hope that, they, that Kilkenny would start out with the intensity that started again Limerick and, you know, continue it on for as long as they possibly can. I think it is going to be an open game. There's going to be plenty of scoring because both sets of forwards are very good and, you know, Pro Park seems forward. So it will be an open game, but it'll just be 
I think I think I think myself is fifty fifty, but you know, one bit of look here or there, a slip maybe or something like that between it. I think the bookmakers probably have Kilkenny as slight underdogs going into it, which is, you know, a lot, maybe a lot of the people around the country think the same as well. But that suited us against them, didn't it? Yeah, and I think it will suit, uh, it will suit us this time as well. I think they've performed better when they went in as underdogs. Uh, I went over to the park during the round robin against Galway, and they were, they were favourites going into Kilkenny, where I just didn't perform. You know, but like we seen again in Limerick last week, or a couple of weeks ago, in the semi final, when they were underdogs, you know, they just came out and just. Blue Limerick away for the first 20 minutes and hopefully it'll be the same again on Sunday. How much have the younger lads impressed you this year? Yeah, like from the start of the year, I was their biggest critic, I suppose, and showed up a couple of tweets to me, detriment I got. Did you delete them though? Uh, I didn't delete them, I left them there, but I got, I, a digital I, yeah, I got a backlash on it, but yeah. look, I could only have ad admiration for them from the start of the year to what they've produced up to now. Um, you know, mentally, the, their mental result when the, you know, the All-Ireland Champions are coming at you, and throwing everything at you that to just stick it out and you know like I said it could only have admiration for them and hopefully they won't let that die on Sunday. Either. So you've settled back into life here at the village alright you're just concentrating on Club Ireland. You, you have a few um, football medals as well have you? Yeah I have a couple of football medals yeah I cherish them football medals they're yeah. hard to win in Kilkenny um, but yeah settling in very well trying to keep the body in, in town now is a different kind of fish out to you know, form rolling and physios and all that kind of stuff. And but that's wear and tear, the body gets that eventually. Yeah, look, it's just years of abuse, I suppose. And when I started at Andrew County level then as well, you know, the sports science was kind of only coming on board, so um, probably started at a wrong time. But you just have to get on with it and we'll deal with, you know, the wear and tear and those things later on. Like. The, the big grub in the city west is what's looked forward anyway, isn't it? No, that's, that's everything, you know, that, that may... And even the, the, the bus journey from Crow Park out to the sea west, like it's, it's just epic. You couldn't, you can't redo those things anywhere. It's just that, that feeling you can't recreate. The morning they all learn what'll happen with the lads, they'll be up for the breakfast, will they? They'll, they'll be up down the Langton's probably about nine o'clock and they'll get all the suits and boots and everything like that into the, into the van from uh, Kilkenny Vehicle Centre used to do it, uh, from the Cannon Road used to do it. And they'll bring all the stuff up to the sea west and have it waiting in the ruins when they get back to the sea west and then they'll just go on the bus then up to the Crown Plaza and get your pre-match meal and, and things like that and then you know come half three then it's all systems go. Were you a man for the music on the bus? Uh, sometimes I used to listen to music I mean I'd be more a man for the snoozes on the Would way up yeah I used to have a, have a little snooze on the back of the bus on the way up and it, no but, problem no problem I just not off. Who were you sitting beside then with that um, <laughs> Richie Power used to sit beside me, and Tommy Welsh used to sit in front of me. But Jeez, everyone, Tommy, 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 yeah, oh, yeah. everyone had their own little team. You know, everyone sat in the same spots. Did they? On the bus every day. Yeah. So we were all together. We all knew our own routines, and you know, we'd have an old chat, and then I'd go off for a sleep, and then Richie Power would turn on a bit of music and things like that. So, uh, but I'd often have a sleep going from the Crown Plaza to Crow Park, which is only about, which is only about five or six minutes of it. Like, so you kind of nod off, and you wake up, and you're going in the game. Isn't it? Would, it, would that be superstition? Lads choosing their own seats like that. Would you get much of that? Absolutely, yeah. Everybody on the bus used to sit, yeah. the, sit in the same seats and they'd have the same songs maybe playing on the, on the iPhone. It was the iPod back when I started. Was the right. iPhone. By, the time now. I, by the time I finished up. Um, but yeah, everybody was the same. And like, I remember Brian Hogan used to all sleep as well. I mean, he snoring his head off in the middle of the bus as well. But everyone had their own little thing yeah. that they'd um, That was just the way it was. Martin, the, the morning of the match, rituals. And you had Johnny yourself? Um, not a whole lot the morning of the match. I get up and have a bit of breakfast and I try to get as much water into as possible. Because you had enough practice for it, like 12 hours. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I, it was usually the day before the match I had the rituals. Uh, my wife used to cook me a pasta meal. Very good. I used to go for a sleep and then I stay up. We're getting uh, a lot of sleep in here yeah, before, aren't we? Well, I used to cover a lot of ground before the part too, so I needed a rest. <laughs> But um, I'd stay up for up for the match then, and yeah, I'd get yeah. a bit of a feel for a bit of a buzz and then I'd go off to bed happy. Would most lads watch up for the match? I wouldn't think so. I wouldn't imagine that most lads would. Like, I probably shouldn't have been watching it, like, you know, seeing all the stuff that was going on. But I actually enjoyed the bit of the banter. Yeah, the man Joe Hayes used to, give me, used to crack me up. I used to yeah, get yeah. lots of that. So I used to enjoy that. And then I'd go off to bed. Because I was after having to sleep during the day, if I went to bed too early, I'd be staring at the scene. So I used to just nod off them and I'd go to sleep maybe at half twelve. Or half level of bar as well. I suppose at the start of your career, lads were trying to balance work and 
you know, hurling a lot more than they are now because in fairness, a lot of careers now thank you people are having to get the time off and stuff, yeah. but like you're hard enough to go out to people that can't get the time off and are committing full time to do your Yeah, well it's tough like, you know, and it was even tough for a couple of lads uh, when we were there, a couple of teachers. After having them all summer off and yeah. by the time we got to the and then they had to be back in work for the for the Tuesday, so we were good enough to get the Monday off because we wouldn't have been home obviously. But, and back in Tuesday then. You know, Dying. Could, could, could you see, would say, on sometime in the near future, lads will be hurling full time? Do you think it'll happen in your life? I don't think it will happen. Would I like it to happen? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think it would be good. No, I wouldn't like to see any transfer dealings or anything like that. But I think we don't want Sky Sports in the morning with the no, no, bright no. Cody arriving into Nolan Park looking out the window. With the yellow tie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Brian, anything happening? Yeah, I can't imagine you yeah. give too much away anyway. No, you wouldn't give that away. But like, I, I do think it's gone so professional that. I think we do need even semi semi professional, you know, giving like, some for play. They're, they're, they're doing the work of a professional athlete. They oh, are. absolutely, and probably more because yeah. they're trying to fit in in probably three or four days in the week, whereas professionals are at every day. So, and then you, you have all the recovery work that's involved in it now, and which is awesome. Oh, it's huge. It's nearly more important now the recovery work than the, tra the actual training. Right, well, listen, we're going to let you go now to college. Well, look, I couldn't go off for Tipperary, so no. um, my heart is telling me to carry it. I have a sneaky feeling in my head that I can't even just do it. Brilliant. Listen, Owen, thanks very much. No bother, Steve.